Martin Luther King preached the politics of the possible. That basically, if you want change, you need to be proposing a change that's politically possible. But here's the problem. We're coming up to the March for Science and the People's Climate March, and I've been thinking about what are the list of demands for these marches? And so often I see scientists making demands for things that just aren't politically possible. For example, one of the things that people are advocating for at the People's Climate March is that every job pays a wage of at least $15 an hour. But to me, that seems like a really good message at really the wrong time. It's an impossible demand to be making right now, and I feel like we haven't even bothered to understand and the political climate before we go and ask for it. Now, don't get me wrong, extraordinary change is possible. But to make extraordinary change happen, you have to do it in a way that benefits everyone, or at least almost everyone. Here's an example. Mexico is one of the most biologically diverse countries in the world. Its rainforests are super important, but in the 1980s and the 1990s, the rainforests were basically being strip mined for their precious woods and then burned for agricultural land. It was really bad, and a lot of the people who tried to stand up to the government got into various levels of trouble. But in the middle of all this deforestation, there was one guy, a Mexican scientist named Jose Sarocan, who convinced the government to set up and fund an entire government agency dedicated to applying environmental science and protecting Mexico's biodiversity. It was called Canabio. So why did Jose Sarocan succeed when so many others had failed? Well, he took the time to understand what the president actually needed. He knew the people of Mexico were upset about the deforestation, and he knew that the president knew. And so he proposed a vital viable solution to that problem. The building of a government department that would make everyone happy. He didn't propose a radical change, like no deforestation ever. He didn't organize marches in the street. He gave the president something that was politically possible. And Canabio has since been safeguarding Mexico's biodiversity for more than 20 years. This year, Jose Sarakan has been chosen to win the Tyler Prize for Environmental Achievement, which is considered the Nobel Prize for the environment. I think the message here is that scientists need to get serious about making change in a way that builds bridges with the political community. But we first need to understand the political climate before we can begin making extraordinary demands. Extraordinary demands can often just polarize people, make people dig in their heels, make it harder for change to happen. Maybe here in the US there's some common ground that the science community could be pitching for, something that the Trump administration could agree to. Maybe it could be that we advise him on how to gear up the nation to be winners at the renewable energy race, something that can make America great again. We need change, we know. but. We need scientists to practice the politics of the possible, and maybe one day we'll get that change. But what about you, PsyQ viewers? Do you have any ideas on how we can practice the politics of the possible when it comes to science? It's not an easy thing to do. Is there any common ground that you can see between our current government and the many problems that science can help solve? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.